When I first started doing the conversion, maybe when I bought the van, I think that's classed as wallpapering. I don't think that's classed as a conversion. What I've done now is ripping the interior of the van out to redo it in its entirety. I'm Sammy and I'm the proud owner of a 1999 Renault Master Ambulance, which I now live in full time with my boyfriend. Living in the van full time is quite a gritty truth. Um, I got into debt when I was in my 20s. Um, I was unfortunately of that generation that were just handed credit cards and that was probably when I was about 18 years old and the reality of that is that I spent money that I didn't really have the concept of what I was spending and if you project that forward now I'm still paying off the fund that I had in my 20s as I'm sure a lot of people are and we pay a lot of rent in Bristol. Um, Bristol is great but this you know the renting market is dri driven very high this I mean I think that's across the board in the UK now we pay an obscene amount of money in bills and we decided to step out of the conforming of rental, not being able to save, not really clearing the debts off to actually clear it. And actually we worked out we can clear this in eight months because we've got no rent, no council tax, no utility bills, nothing. And by doing that, even though it is coming into the winter and it's gonna be slightly harder, we are gonna clear our debts in eight months rather than what worked out as three years. So the lifestyle shift will be quicker and it means that it's a short term pain over winter but long term gain because we can go away in this in the summer now and have money in our pockets. So this is the rear of the van, this is where the seats and the bed sort of double up as the same thing. Quite fortunate because the seats are actually quite big and so is the bed. Uh, my boyfriend's six foot four and he does fit in it which is great. Um, the walls are probably my most proudest achievement. I've done them completely out of pallet wood for free. Probably the most tedious part is picking the nails out. If you can get past that part without hurting yourself too badly, then the rest is just sanding process and, and nailing it to the wall. So there is some ply board behind the walls. Um, this particular wall is um, untreated. So we've literally just sanded it back and put it up. Um, the ceiling was erected by my boyfriend. Um, I think this is when we first started doing the van and I wasn't overly confident on doing pallet wood. And this is just as it is, as it comes. So they're all different colors. It's a bit weird and wonderful. And we've left it raw, which I think looks quite nice. This side is um, slightly different from the other two. It's um, been stripped back and sanded, but it's got tongue oil on it, which sort of allows the grain to pop out, which is really, really nice. And it gives it a slightly warmer finish. So we've left each one as being slightly different. And I think that sort of lends itself to the stages we went through. Um, so the wood, yeah, really, really proud of the wood. And all of them are slightly different angles, which gives it quite a quirky feel. The top cupboards are reclaimed. I paid five pounds for them from a reclamation yard. They're just MDF cupboards. They were brown originally, and so I've just put some chalk paint on them, and then I sanded them back, and then I glossed over it with some uh, really light varnish. The handles are also from a reclamation yard. They cost me a couple of quid. They're really, really, really cheap. The curtains, we've got one curtain to the rear and one curtain to the side, um, which when we're sleeping, the curtain to this side and, uh, lends itself as a blackout curtain. The curtain to the rear is actually just a really good draft excluder for the back doors because the back doors can be a bit drafty. Um, and actually, they have been something that I've hoarded for the last 10 years and I just wouldn't throw away because they're really expensive curtains. But they've turned out to be really, really, really good. The wallpaper is from B&Q and this section here is just samples, <laughs> thanks b and um, The other part, the leather sort of look is, is a roll of wallpaper and it was in the sale for eight quid, so it cost me next to nothing. Um, the seats, actually under the seats, we redid under the seats, they're all out of pallet wood. Um, and actually under there is loads of storage. So in this side, we've got two massive water butts and a water heater. The piping then just goes straight through to the shower block, which is here. And I've got a nice hot shower for when I want it um, and a toilet and everything else as per everyone else in the house. So I get to live normally. The bed um, is quite easy to pull out. Uh, I think originally we had normal bed slats. Uh, problem is you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down it's not hard to break the bed slats. So we actually just got four really solid pieces of wood that we can pack down quite quickly. And those four pieces of wood um, are just stored away um, in the bathroom as and when we need them because the bed's up quite a bit um, and they tend to last a bit longer. The cushions and uh, throws and uh, sheepskin rugs, we've got them scattered around, which actually in the evening are great because they kind of add the extra warmth as and when we need it. 
The conversion for Rambo, my ambulance has taken around four weeks, but it has been full time in, in the day. So I'd probably say you, you could do this over a six week period if you were applying evenings to it. Uh, and that is from wiring through to wood and tiling. So yeah, there's definitely a shorter time frame than even I would have considered for it, but you can do it if you want to apply yourself to it. Welcome to the kitchen. This is my favorite part of the camper van. Um, due to the fact that I do love cooking and I'm a massive fan of all my spices and herbs and things. Uh, one of my favourite features of this particular kitchen is the piece of hemlock that we, cho we chose to buy. Um, it was about £80 for an entire sheet of it and it was probably the most expensive part of doing the whole conversion. Uh, the choice being is that obviously we want it to last and we want it to look really nice. I've chosen to sort of use other chopping blocks to sort of keep that protected to a certain degree. Um, this is a piece of olive wood which is great because it doubles up as extra work surface space but on the flip side I do have my uh, copper sink underneath it and I say copper but it's copper sprayed. It's actually a metal sink, the copper sinks are really expensive. I was on a really strict budget so I just paid five quid from eBay for a normal stainless steel uh, sink and then the spray cost about 10 quid so it sort of kept it on a fairly low budget. The little Mexican tiles cost me about 30 quid off of eBay, they weren't very expensive and actually these white ones are reclaimed so they didn't cost very much at all, I think I paid like two or three quid for the tiles themselves. Actually, I got on with the tiling okay. I didn't find it that hard. I'm not saying they're perfect by any means, but maybe that sort of adds to the weird shabby chic look I've got going on. So that was quite good. The cooker top um, cost me about 30 quid off of eBay as well. So again, fairly cheap and actually you can get these really easily off eBay. The spice rack we created um, out of um, <laughs> the front being wooden spoons because we weren't quite sure what to use um, and I had lots of wooden spoons knocking around so we decided to use those to keep the spices in. The actual wood itself um, is, uh, was made by my boyfriend and it's been sort of sanded back and tongue oil has been used to give out a really nice authentic look. So most of this kitchen so far apart from the hemlock has been done for next to nothing. Behind door number one, we do have more herbs and we also have my control panel, which controls literally everything that runs off of the 12 volt ledger battery. Um, that's going through to the kitchen lights. I have some more kitchen lights that are under here. We have some running lights, which are LEDs above us, and we have a bathroom light as well, which is cool. There is an extractor fan that's part of an ambulance feature that does come with the ambulance. We had to sort of do a bit of rewiring but that gives me a nice extractor if it's raining outside and I don't just want to use the window because the window space is quite tiny. The other things that run from the 12 volt is the water pump, which gives me use from the taps in the bathroom and in the kitchen. And also it allows the diesel heater, which again is an ambulance feature, which is underneath this whole unit and has been bolted to the floor. So the unit was sort of built around it, which is great. So that's where all of the 12 volt stuff is. In here we have more food. This is like an air hinge. We had a bit of trouble fixing it. Um, it was a bit awkward and in the end we had to put quite a big bit of block of wood behind it. It's not really my style to have things looking so messy but it is behind closed doors so I sort of let it slide. But we keep most of the food and tins of stuff and teas and coffees and whatnot in here. Um, it's quite nice because of the way this does open. So I think we, you know, regardless of the block of wood it does serve a purpose. This is another cupboard and I have a slight addiction with Chinese super noodles so um, I've got a whole cupboard full of super noodles. This particular part of the kitchen I do love. This is when I first started doing the woodwork um, and I wasn't really sure what I was doing and I'm a little bit stubborn so I wasn't really listening to my boyfriend either. Um, the drawer did take me an entire day. This is like I said before, I actually knew what I was doing. So this drawer is made completely out of pallet wood. Um, it is, it is one of those drawers that's become a bit of an anything drawer, but it's probably the mo most robust out of them. And again, you've got this really nice red stained pallet wood. So this particular type of pallet is quite heavy. Um, all of these drawers have been made by me. This is a reclaimed handle. I actually went to a twine and rope shop for these um, and they laughed at me when I asked for what was the equivalent of three handles worth of rope. It cost me about two pounds. I wasn't their biggest customer of the day, as you can imagine. 
Um, there's a garage across the road from me. I asked if I could have a look through his nuts. That probably created a few laughs as well. So I've got lots of these little loose, loose, loose nuts that I decided to add to the jute rope as well. Um, the bottom one I use the nodule to like get a little flip down. That allows me to, I've got random bags and bits of storage under there. This is the front of the van. It's probably not the most exciting part. We don't spend as much time up the front as we do out the back, but actually it's got a massive purpose to our van life journey. There is first and foremost a seating area, which um, also doubles up as storage underneath. And there are lots and lots of clothes and room for clothes, which is what we use it for. I would say it's a shared wardrobe space. It really isn't. I have most of it underneath in my clothes and a very small corner are my boyfriend's which he seems to be living with at the moment because I'm struggling with the downsize from a house to a van. This is a wardrobe. This is still requiring a door to be built by yours truly, but it does actually house all of the clothes. I have dresses and onesies and all sorts going on in there and lots and lots of clothes at the top. So none of these come falling out. It's fairly robust. It does the job. I'm like a normal person with a normal wardrobe. Um, this pretend bookcase, if you didn't guess it already, um, does actually have lots and lots of storage behind it. So it is an ambulance, so the front sort of goes right, it's a bit of a TARDIS, it goes right the way back. So whilst I have towels and things that we use all the time at the front, um, there is lots and lots of things like uh, laptops and scarves, of which I have an addiction to, and medical stuff and makeup and girls' toiletries and things. And it has more in there than most people would probably realise. The perks of having an ambulance is the abundance of storage you've got going on. This is actually the screen that blocks off from between the ambulance and the camper. It is amazing and you wouldn't be, you'd be very surprised at how much heat a barrier it creates. It's nice and toasty in here in the winter and it can be exceptionally cold out there and vice versa. It can be cooler in here in the summer and it can be roasting in there. So it, it serves a huge purpose for sort of controlling the temperature in here. Um, it is literally just a sliding screen. Uh, I don't claim to have made it. It did come with the previous ambulance um, and it, it just allows us quick access to the front of the cab. So if things come tumbling over when we're on the road, um, whoever's in the passenger seat will probably hook back and try and fix whatever's going on uh, without having the need to pull over. My cat, um, who is graciously in the front at the moment, being nice and uh, sleepy, does come back and forward and she has claimed the driver's seat. So she does live and sit and sleep on the driver's seat um, unless she's pottering about. So um, she's, she's nice and asleep there at the moment. Another section of storage um, that's extremely useful is the table. Um, it's literally on a catch that's um, against the bathroom door. So you don't really notice that it's there, but at the same time, when it comes to having dinner, all you've got to do is pull the, uh, the legs out and that's it. You've got a fixed table to have your dinner at. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's just become an essential part of keeping some sort of normal routine whilst we're living a van life and trying to be normal individuals. In 2012, when I bought this van, the van itself was very cheap. Uh, van life wasn't a massive thing. I was quite fortunate that I bought it off of a New Zealand couple who had been touring around Europe in it and um, had shown me that everything worked and was you know, functioning really well. This approach to doing things myself and learning the hard way has actually taught me how to do shabby chic painting, um, woodwork, tiling, you name it, I've learned how to do it. And I think if I can do it, then anyone can do it because I'm an office based person and I've picked up skill sets that I'll have for the rest of my life. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe now and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. If you want to support us and help continue making our videos, then join us on Patreon from only $1 a month. See you on the next one.